Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Um, thank you for joining us. Today is going to be more of an educational video. I'm going to be talking about something that I think is actually very important, um, which would be why squirrels do not make good pets. So this is Squirrely Pants. She is a female squirrel. Her her story is, well, she's very playful today. Um, her story is that I, I work at a pet store and um, somebody brought her in one day. She was very small, very dehydrated. She was ice cold um, and I kept her with me all day at work that way, just kind of in my sports bra trying to stay warm in there. Um, and she was so cold, I could feel her cold body like on the outside of my shirt. And she was making me cold. And she'd been attacked by a cat or something. She's got a little hole in her ear. She had some, um, look looked like bites or scratches or something on her belly. Um, she was in really rough shape and I, I didn't know if she was going to make it or not. Um, but I did take her home. Uh, first thing I did was, you know, get her on a heating pad. Um, and giving her Pedialyte was very important to rehydrate her. Because most of the time, if you find a baby squirrel, um, first thing that they're going to need is to be rehydrated. You do not, I repeat, do not want to feed a baby squirrel or any baby animal before it has been rehydrated. Um, that can cause a lot of issues with digestion in their bellies and you could kill them that way. So it's very important to rehydrate. Best way to hydrate would be to be with Pedialyte. Um, unflavored, preferably. Um, sometimes that can be hard to find. And in that case, um, you could just do a, do a flavor, but just do a little bit. Um, do be very careful of aspirating them, which would mean that you would be, um, while hand feeding them the liquid, it could get in their lungs, cause them to aspirate and basically drown. So you do wanna be very careful about that and just put a little bit in their mouth at a time, make sure none of it's going down, you know, their sinus cavity, down into their lungs, anything like that. So just nice and easy. This is gonna be an exhausting video. All right, so we're going to talk about why you should not pick up a baby squirrel from the ground outside and what is that oh okay it, it was just a plant outside the window calm down <laughs> all right this is, so why you should not um just pick up a baby squirrel that you happen to find on the ground outside um if it's obviously a baby um, it may have been orphaned. Um, if it's left alone for a few hours, then likelihood of it being orphaned is pretty high. In that case, you would want to pick up the squirrel, put it in a little box, keep it warm, um, and contact a wildlife rehabilitator immediately. Working at a pet store, I, I do get this often um, when it comes to baby bunnies, baby birds, baby squirrels, all kinds of baby animals. People find them in their yards. There's different rules for each. Generally, the number one rule is to leave it alone. Um, with baby bunnies, just leave it alone indefinitely. Don't worry about it. Um, they, you know, mama will take care of it. Um, baby birds, please just leave it alone. Unless it's like injured um, and you want to try to save its life, take it to an animal rehabber. Otherwise, please do not take any wild animal into your home with the intention of keeping it as a pet. Another thing is that the likelihood of an animal surviving um, being rehabbed by an amateur um, is very low. Baby bunnies almost never survive. Um, baby birds almost never survive. Squirrels are a little hardier, but still that doesn't mean that you should. The reason I rehabbed her is because I do have experience rehabbing baby animals. Um, and, you know, I have wanted a squirrel for a while and I've wanted this opportunity. Um, it is legal to have squirrels as pets in South Carolina. So I wasn't breaking the law, um, and I, I wanted to do what was best for her. Um, she's not releasable. My plan was to raise her up and then release her back out into the wild, but I kind of knew better. Um, I knew that I was handling her too much. I was hand feeding her, um, letting her play with my animals, my cats and dogs and stuff, so she's very bold. Now, let's just get straight to the point. What does it require to take good care of a pet squirrel? Well. You need a very, very large enclosure, more like an aviary or, you know, a reinforced aviary because you couldn't just use that fine mesh you'd use for birds. You need something strong enough that a squirrel can't chew through. Um, she would not make it in the wild on her own because she's too bold. She's too bossy. She, she has no fear. Um, and then to live, to live in the wild and survive, you've got to have a healthy fear of, of stray cats and things like that, which she does not have. Also a healthy fear of humans. 
uh, which she does not have. So you need a very large enclosure. You need to have the capability of having them ideally outdoors. Uh, right now I do have her, her only enclosure is this house, which she spends a lot of time just kind of running around. Um, but also um, a big bird cage is what I have for her to sleep in and hang out, um, hang out in. That's where you know, her room is basically. Um, but we're going to be moving soon, and, and my plan is to you know, build her a large outdoor enclosure. I've got some decent sized dog kennels I can use, reinforce those, um, and give her a lot of space outdoors. Um, ow. Another thing is, they play rough, very rough. She's biting me, she's scratching me, she's crawling all over me. Obviously, I'm not bleeding, she's playful biting, um, but you know, it doesn't feel good. Um, but you know, that's just how, this is how they are. I've taught her to bite lightly. She doesn't bite too hard because, you know, I've kind of trained her to be gentle, but you know, they do bite, they do scratch. So yeah, if you're not willing to tolerate getting bit and scratched, then you do not want a wild animal as a pet because she'll never be actually domesticated. She's still a wild animal. Um, she's a tame wild animal, but she's still wild. When they clamor all around you, um, I've had some serious scratches on my neck and on my face, near my eyes, just from playing with her. Because um, sometimes she'll climb up on something like this and I'll walk over to her and she'll just want to jump on me and come straight from my face. And these claws are designed to hook into tree bark, you know, and they're, they're very, very sharp and they're like little hooks. So she will hook into my skin, my flesh, like it's tree bark. But that's a wild animal for you. That's what it's like to have a wild animal as a pet. If you don't want that, then don't have a pet squirrel. Or if you're not willing to tolerate that. So another thing is food. They need a wide variety of food. Her squirrel food is very expensive and it's got all these fancy nuts and fruits and stuff in it. Um, and then on top of that, you know, I give her fresh fruits and vegetables and just a variety of snacks. And she, they're opportunists and they're omnivores. So they're gonna eat just about anything they can get their hands on. Um, in fact, let me get her some treats so she stops being so crazy. Give me one second. Another thing about squirrels in captivity is that they can live a very long time, um, 20 plus years. Now, really think about that. 20 years. Long time. Um, I'm not one to talk. I mean, I, I love long-lived animals. I have a sulcata tortoise who's going to outlive me. You know, I, I like my animals to live as long as possible, really. Yeah, 12 years is the oldest living wild squirrel on record. Um, and I think it was just a little over 20 years for the oldest pet squirrel on record. So that's definitely something to think about is that that's a long-term pet. You're going to have that for 20 years if, you know, ideally if you're taking good care of it, which you should be if you're going to be having one as a pet. Pumpkin seeds, one of her favorite things. Let's see, hear that sound? It's a little bit of food aggression for you. Another really adorable thing that I love that squirrels do is I don't know if you've ever been watching a squirrel and they run around and you know they're burying stuff well they if they know they're being watched they will falsely bury something which she will do all the time she'll go like bury something in one of my dogs like in, in their coat in their fur or she'll go to the bottom of her cage and act like she's burying something down there when she's not at all and it's just a distraction so that she can actually go do the real burying and actually hide her food somewhere else. They're very sneaky. Um, they also do this cool thing, or see how she's hanging by her back legs? Her front legs aren't attached to anything at all right now. This is, like, she does this all the time. Here it sounds, squirrels are actually very accurately the Native American symbol for trust, preparation, and thriftiness. And I think that that's just a great description of them in general. So yeah, they make a variety of complex sounds and signals, um, including tail language, vocal sounds, and scents. There's a lot going on with squirrels. Um, there's a lot to take in, a lot to think about. Um, they're not just like any other, you know, it's not like a hamster or something. Like, There's a lot to them. Um, so you got to think about, do you want this pretty intelligent, very sharp, very spastic, um, very demanding, food aggressive, tame wild animal running rampant in your house? Most people would say no. So please think about it before you pick up that baby squirrel outside. Give it a chance to let its mom find it. Give it a couple hours. 
if mom doesn't come, then yes, please contact wildlife rehabbers so they can come pick up the baby squirrel from you and they know what to do and they'll, you know, they'll do what's right for the squirrel. Another thing wildlife rehabbers are able to do is to socialize them with other squirrels, which unfortunately she hasn't had the opportunity to do. Um, the only time she would have that opportunity now is if I were to come across another squirrel that needed rehabbing, which I would be more inclined to rehab it myself so that I could, you know, let her have a little for, for, uh, floral scrambling squirrel family. I hope this has given you a little bit of insight on what it would be like to have a squirrel as a pet. That yes, they're cute, they're fun, um, but they are destructive. Uh, she has torn up my favorite curtains. So yeah, she is adorable and I love her. But is she a good pet? No, she is not. I don't mind being stuck with her because I love her. But I do hope to prevent others um, from bringing squirrels in. It's just it's not a good idea. So please, if you have any questions, if I missed anything important, um, please feel free to leave a comment below. Ask anything you like. Um, there is a lot more about squirrels. I don't want to cover everything and make an hour video because no one is going to want to watch that. Uh, any specific questions, anything that I missed that you're curious about, please leave it in the comments below. So please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a good day. Goodbye, squirrely pants.